In the name of the risen and living Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Those are words that touch our souls, aren't they? His goodness is leading us home. It puts our life in a perspective. And if you don't take anything else today, please take this. Jesus Christ lives, and Jesus loves you, and He's going to lead you home. Home for me is Salt Lake City, as Pastor Bader mentioned. I followed him there. It's been about six years ago now that he moved here, and I moved there to fill his shoes. I'm still cleaning up messes from his time there. No, uh, there are big shoes to fill, and he's left a big part of himself, and the Lord used him for a lot of good that is still kind of coming to fruition. People are grateful there. I'm really glad that today I could be here praying that maybe it helped him and his family a little bit this week with some more time. But I think what I have to help with today is just to give you this voice, the words of the one who is the overseer and shepherd of our souls, who cares deeply about us, who has bought us so that he could have us and he could lead us home. So Jesus says to us today in this particular section of John 10, I'm kind of starting at the end, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And so now I know what Jesus is here for, why he came into this world that he made that was all broken up and a big mess because he wants me and you to have life and have it to the full. But I want to ask Jesus, I want to ask him with you, maybe our definitions of full life are a little different because this is one of those places where I feel a disconnect between what Jesus is saying and what I'm feeling a lot of the time, especially when heavy things come around. I know the way things ought to be, should be, you know this too, and then you know that there's the way things are and sometimes they seem to be worlds apart. And is it still full life if things aren't the way that they should be? St. Peter was writing to people who were well aware of things not being the way that they should be, that things feeling terribly wrong. They were people suffering unjustly. People suffering because of their faith in Christ. We don't understand all of what was going on, but it was definitely hurting. And he wrote to them and said, there is this thing where you suffer justly, because of your sin and your stupidity, and every one of us can tell our own stories of suffering justly for reaping what we've sowed. But that's not what he wants to write them about. He's talking about when they suffer unjustly because of the consequences of sin in this world and because of the sin that other people have done against them. And he has advice for them in this suffering. I mean, you have your own list of things that aren't the way they're supposed to be. What do you do with that? you got to do something with that. What do you do with that? Here's where St. Peter starts. Look away from yourself. Look outside of you. It doesn't feel right. And that's okay and that's good. God made us with emotions that kind of tell us if things are right or wrong. But they aren't the thing that can fix it. And actually, they cause a downward spiral when we're just stuck inside of ourselves where we all get to, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't fix it. And so St. Peter says this, look outside. Here's how he says it. Follow Jesus' example. And what did Jesus do? He entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He hands himself and his suffering which is the most unjust and awful suffering that this world has known, an innocent man, shamed and crucified. And he trusts himself to his Father's hands. He doesn't look inside of himself, but outside of himself. And so that's square one, huh? I need you, Lord. 
And we know it's always true, but it says something when we say it. I need you, Lord. I entrust my, me and my life to you that's looking to somebody beyond you, bigger than you. But then there's a, a place we can't go past. We, we entrust ourselves to, to the Lord, to our Father in heaven like the Lord Jesus did, follow his example, but we can't go all the way in following him. He, bore, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. He went to the cross so that, not so that we would have him as an example to follow, to be crucified or something, but so that he could, could win for us and give to us the complete forgiveness of our sins as purely a gift that he could call us his own and he could heal us up by his wounds purely as a gift. He wants to call you his sheep today, his own, his, mine, for good. And it's not something that you do to be a sheep. It's just what you are when the good shepherd says you're mine. This is done. And thank God for it working that way. And this is right. For all the things that don't feel right, this, it's not hard to sing what we just sang, is it? His goodness is going to lead me home. He is then not giving you, St. Peter is not giving you just advice on how to suffer and how to get your suffering right. God help us. But he's telling us that we are already his and already perfect and already righteous because his suffering covers over our suffering. And I don't even know what that fully means all the way down to the depths of it. But I know it's good. We are already perfect in Him. So what is God holding against you, brother or sister, today? Nothing now. You don't need to hold anything against yourself anymore either because He has healed you by His wounds. That means new life. It's what St. Peter really wants us to hear. You died to the sin. It's not counted against you. Don't get stuck in the past and hold on to that. You get to live today. Fresh start. Brand new little lamb hopping around to live for rightness and righteousness and the goodness and being any kind of part of things being the way they, they should be, the way that you want them to be. You have the courage now to do this. Entrust yourself to Him because by His wounds you are healed. By His wounds you are healed. And the good life has something to do with living on the, on the wounds of Jesus, of looking outside of yourself, a fullness of life that comes from seeing the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who has done that for you and promised that His goodness will follow you all the way home. It will drive you home. It will carry you home. And trust yourself to Him who suffered unjustly and who has the authority to speak to our suffering and our trials because He's been there and more. And he says to us that whatever is happening, no matter how great the weight of it, no matter how dark it looks, he is still stronger. And he will be with us, with you, not apart from it, but right there in it, and he will be with you all the way through it. And it can't crush you. It might take you right to the edge. It might take you over the edge. He'll catch you. It cannot crush you because it can't crush Him. And there's no you and Him anymore. You've been baptized into Christ. It's Him and you always now. And he is strong. Always look outside of you then and entrust yourself over and again Put yourself, you have the courage to put yourself and your broken pieces of your life into God's hands. You know how he thinks about you. You know what he has done for you and you have every promise that he will continue in good for you. And trust yourself to him who loves you, who died for you, who forgives you, who rose for you, who lives for you. 
and trust yourself to Him. But I don't want to give you the impression that this is what this is really all about in the end, that you've got to entrust yourself to Jesus well enough and then you can somehow have a good life as though now it's back on you. And trusting yourself to Him, even that is something He does to you. And we heard today about how He does it. He draws you in, not by force, because that's not love, but by a winsome voice, by speaking to you. This is always how God wants to work among us. It seems so wimpy sometimes, but then you watch and you see amazing displays of His grace. Then you listen again to the one who made the whole world by speaking it into existence and you remember this word actually has authority and power. It's a voice that you've come to know. Jesus tells a, a parable maybe, a figure of speech he said, and it's about listening to this thing that draws you in and gives you the trust that you need. It's the story of a sheep, uh, of sheep in this pen, think four walls, four stone walls, maybe a few feet tall with kind of thorns and briars and thistles on the top, ancient barbed wire. The idea here is that this is a pen, a place where you can take, the shepherd can take his sheep at night and they'll be like a watchman at the door and the four walls will keep the sheep in it and they'll keep the thieves, robbers, and wolves out of it. And then in the morning, the shepherd will come back and there's the gatekeeper there. He'll recognize the shepherd and he'll know which sheep belong to him because he'll speak. The shepherd will speak. And they'll follow that familiar voice right out into the pasture. I remember seeing an interview, it was like Australian television or something, uh, with this woman who was a shepherd, and they're standing in front of the fence where the sheep are, and the reporter is speaking very, or the reporter's asking questions, but the shepherd is speaking very quietly. And finally she asked her, why are you talking so quiet? And she said, because if they hear my voice, and sure enough, she started to speak louder and they all turned their heads and they walked toward. I think it's kind of like you getting up and coming here this morning because you know this voice. By the way, it's another day to thank God for that, isn't it? Not everyone knows this voice. And you do. And you know where it, you've come from and what, where this voice is leading you and that it will be with you the whole way. The sheep of God know His voice. You know this familiar voice of love because it brought you in. It's changed your life. We had no shepherd. We're exposed out in a world of deathly kind of stuff. Thieves, robbers, savage wolves, and we're all dirty. As St. Peter says it, for you are like sheep going astray until a staff reached out and some shepherd hooked us around the neck and pulled us really close. And there was a voice. And that Word of God drew us right to the door of God's church. And the door was a sheep that looked just like us. And we stood there and watched that lamb, that sheep, that lamb of God, fall down and then wolves were hurling insults at him. And he started bleeding. And thank God the blood splattered on us as we stood there and watched. And then the lamb died. And then on the third day, just like he said, he came to life, that great shepherd of the sheep. And he picked us up and put us close to his heart like the picture on the front of your bulletin today and carried us into the fold. This one he called by name. It's mine. And he, on the way in, he gave us a bath and a name. He called it Holy Baptism. And a voice. We heard a voice. You were like sheep going astray, but now, now it's all different. Now you have been returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. He found us and he brought us home to himself, where we're this. It's us and him.
And suddenly his voice is the only voice we really want to hear. So many going on around us, so many voices. His is the one that sounds different. Says things like, I'll give up everything so you lack nothing. Who else speaks to you like that? This is the voice that we love to hear. He knows us. He knows you by name. The, the gifts just keep kind of flowing when you have a shepherd and when he's going to stick with you. He knows us. He knows us by name. He knows what you're struggling with. He knows what you can't fix. He knows the sins that you're trying to hide and he knows how you're struggling to do good and to follow after him. He knows your anxieties and your worries. He knows you better than you know yourself. And none of it shakes him. It doesn't cause him to back off. It causes him to come close and to hold you tighter. Can you imagine? This is one worth listening to. Full life, brothers and sisters, then is, is life having a shepherd. It's life with him in his green pastures. It's hanging on his words, I forgive you. Full life, then, is seeing the goodness of God in the little things all around you and even the, in finding him even in the things that look like he could never, somehow, could never be good. And yet he says, this too is mine and I'm there with you in every struggle. Full life, then, is a life that can walk even through the valley of the shadow of death without fear because he's with me. And his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Full life is not a life of wondering and wandering. It's a life of certainty and safety. Full life is not a life of seeking or trying to get it right. It's a life of knowing that you have been found. And just living right there and trusting yourself to him again today. I know there is a gap between what should be and what is in our emotions, in our hearts, in our lives, in so many ways, and I can't fix that. I can't change your feelings or mine. If we're stuck there, if it's only about the feelings, then I, I'm afraid we're still entrusting ourselves to ourselves. So today, I can give you what the Lord offers, an invitation to trust something outside of yourself. To live by faith in that voice, in those promises. He says to you, I know how you feel. I absolutely actually do. And I'm asking you to take me at my word and my promises that I am with you, my little lamb, and I am for you, my little lamb. And this is the reason that you can keep watching and waiting and watching and praying and waiting, even with so much that is wrong, that is not the way it should be, because, because the things we long for are real in Him. Because it's not just wishful thinking that things might be right again. It's like your pastor said to me last night, Jesus lives then it's really going to be okay if Jesus lives and He lives and He lives for you. So even in the deepest, darkest darkness, we have one we can trust, a voice we know is trustworthy with all the other loud voices around, a voice that will not leave us. He will watch and wait and weep with us, with you. You will not wait. You will never wait. You will never struggle all alone. I am here for you, little lamb. So now we live by faith in that voice, and I tell you, it's got to be full life. You know today's suffering is not the whole story. You follow that voice, you entrust yourself to Him, and get this, today, because He loves you so much, He entrusts Himself to you. Here, my body and my blood, given for you, given to you, I give myself to you so we can be so close. Your good and perfect shepherd lives to shepherd you home. It is going to be okay.
His mercy, His goodness will chase you down, follow you all the days of your life till you dwell in the house of the Lord forever where things are right now just like they should be and will be forever. And that'll be full life beyond what we can even imagine. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My cup overflows. Praise be to his name. Amen.